So what is a cipher surface? So if you have a, a link in a theme manifold, then a cipher surface is just an embedded uh, surface, uh, oriental, oriented surface whose boundary is that link. Uh, and, and, and in this case, we're gonna be thinking about all our links as oriented. So even if I don't say it, think of everything as oriented. Okay, so here's some examples uh, with knots in S3. Uh, so the unknot, of course, clearly balance this disk uh, with an appropriate orientation. And uh, this is another way to see the trafoil next. And you can see a uh, orientable surface here. And I'm gonna do this thing right here. To let you know that this is the opposite or the opposite side of that surface. And similarly, we have the, the half link here. Note here though that the half link, these orientations are important. If I had oriented the uh, the second component the other way, uh, then this wouldn't be the, the surface that I drew would not be a cipher surface anymore because the orientations with the surface and the boundary did not line up. Okay. So let's first talk about uh, links in S3. So given a link diagram uh, for a link, so in S3 you have one of these, then there's an algorithm called Cypher's algorithm which produces uh, oriented or orientable surface with boundary L. I should say oriented though. And here's how this process works. So first, uh, coming down to the wrong spot. At each crossing of your diagram, we're gonna draw uh, what we call a shortcut arc. And what does this mean? Well, let's say we have a crossing that looks like this. Uh, well, I don't know what I'm doing this for. But a shortcut arc is, is where you, you, you go to where you come into the knot and you shortcut to the other strand going the same, with the same orientation. You can do that on both sides. So I guess technically it should be jaw stroke cut arcs. Doing this uh, always creates a set of uh, disjoint circles in the plane. These are called cipher circles. Let's do a quick little example down here. You have a nice figure eight knot. Um, uh, first, we need to orient it, right? Let's, let's orient this thing. Yeah. Okay. So, this guy's gonna shortcut this way. And this was shortcut going this way. Ah. And then we get, oops. I'm gonna go on like this. One going like that. Then one going like this, and one going like that. And one more here, right?
Okay. And so the, the circles that we get are uh, these guys, and they can be nested. So we had one nice circle down here. That's a nice circle, right? And then we got this one small circle right here. But we also have one, I draw a different color, this one large circle, which kind of goes underneath that one. It goes all the way through here. So you can't, so you don't always get, uh, uh, the circles are disjoint, but the, but the disc they would draw may not be disjoint. Which is fine. Uh, oh, I guess I already did step two, which is filling in circles with disc. <laughs> and you might have to like, you know, if you want to actually embed this in S3 again, you might have to like make these parallel copies somehow. And the last step is at each crossing. We're just going to add a uh, twisted band. Uh, connecting the disc. And we want to. Uh, Match the crossing type, right? So just draw a bigger picture down here. If our circle is going like this, we want to add in the, the twisted band that looks like, you know, like this guy, right? That's what we're gluing in to actually get the surface. And so you can see how the twisted bands we added in like this. And then you get a cipher surface. Uh, this algorithm is always going to give you a surface that is uh, orientable. And as long as this, uh, as long as you have a diagram that is not separated in the actual plane diagram, right? So you don't want to, you know, if you do something like uh, like this, then of course this not, this this uh, this is going to give you technically not a cipher surface. It just gives you two surfaces that are disconnected. But as long as this, uh, as long as it's not split in the diagram, you you should uh, be fine. So you can like just do something stupid like this. It's the same link, but now when I do the algorithm, I'll get, actually get a separate surface. So just like with Hager splittings, we can stabilize cipher surface. Uh, it first starts with the fact that every cipher surface is isotopic to a disk with bands connected. Uh, these bands could be knotted, and they could be twisted up in all sorts of ways. Um, but you can always get a disc with some bands. Uh, so this one that I drew only has one uh, boundary component, but you can obviously make more than one boundary component just by, you know, gluing on differently, right? All right, so what is stabilization? Well, to stabilize a cipher surface, you, you draw it like, like this, the disk with bands, uh, and then you do this operation. You start by, uh, you want to attach. So I'm going to take these out because I want to attach some things here. So we're going to attach on one band that is unknotted and untwisted. And then we're going to attach on another band 
They can do whatever you want. It can not, it can twist or do whatever. I just put dots here. You can do whatever you want with this other band. And we're going to get another cipher surface. It's a, it's a higher genus. And the boundary of this new cipher surface is going to be the same knot. And to see that it is, you could just uh, like remove this part right here. This is the same as just doing this. And then you can just uh, drag this along and undo whatever you did with this other band. All right, so that's how you stabilize. Oh, there are the words. And just like with our Hager splittings, we can get the two cipher surfaces are stably equivalent if they can be made isotopic uh, by stabilization. So again, exactly like Hager splittings, it doesn't mean you can stabilize one and get the other. Uh, it just means that there's, if I stabilize both of them, eventually I can get to two surfaces that are isotopic. Any questions so far? Uh, so there's a lemma, who would back in 69, that says that any two cipher surface for a link are stably equivalent. And we're not gonna go through this proof because it's not very, uh, it's very long and technical, but it is true. And this is important because this means that we can define lots of invariants using cipher surfaces. Uh, for example, you know, you can get uh, like Alexander polynomials and signatures and things like this are all, can all be defined using the agenda, uh, using uh, cipher surfaces. All right, so now we're gonna kind of switch up things. We're gonna talk about boundary links. <laughs> so first, a link in a three manifold uh, is gonna be split if you can uh, separate them with, uh, with the two sphere, it's basically the idea. Uh, so, for example, the thing that I drew before, which looks something like this, right? If I think of these as being embedded in S3, then, then clearly there's like a, a disk here. I'm not a disk, a sphere here that, that, that splits these apart. And the boundary link is uh, a link just that there are disjoint cipher surfaces uh, for each link. For uh, uh, It's a link such that there is two sublinks for which there's disjoint cipher surfaces, right? So let's do some examples. Um, this is... Actually, I changed my mind this morning. I don't want to do this example. I'll say that for later. Uh, but the first example is called the Whitehead link. Um, this is not a boundary link. And to see that, um, you can use some uh, covering space theory, which I'm going to leave for the exercises. And for the other one, so this is not a boundary link. And the other guy is a boundary link. And to see that, we can just uh, color in the cipher surface, one here for this component, and then one for this 
this other component. And of course, these are disjoint. So first, of course, uh, split links are boundary links, of course, because if you can separate them by a sphere, then uh, you can, and of course, yeah, I should say here, we, we mean uh, no homologous links. If you're not no homologous, then uh, all the components, should, we assume that all the components are no homologous, I should say. Or maybe we just assume that we're an integer homologous sphere. Let's just say that. That's what we really care about for the most part in this book. Uh, right, so if you're split, then that means you're definitely going to uh, bound services in each side uh, of the other sphere, each link. The last thing I want to do today, uh, what I want to do for the rest of the session is talk about this theorem, which has this area oriented link in a uh, in an integer homogeneous sphere uh, bounds the cipher surface. So this is we're no longer in S three anymore, so we can't really just do our regular projection trick like we usually like to do a cipher algorithm. So we're going to have to think about this a little bit harder. So first, uh, I'm going to prove a lemma. I, I won't set it up. Let's say I have a knot in an integer homogeneous sphere. Uh, actually, I always say here that we always assume things are closed and uh, uh, orientable. I guess that's redundant. But the close, we are assuming it's closed. Uh, so let's assume we have an energy homogeneous sphere, uh, M. And we're going to label our meridian as usual in the longitude. And of course, just like we've said before, uh, the boundary of this guy is going to be the boundary of a tuber neighborhood, which is just uh, an S1, a solid torus, S1 cross D2. We can also say it's just S1 cross the boundary of D2. And so from here, we're going to define a map. It goes from the boundary to uh, the boundary of the, the second component here. Uh, and it's just gonna be uh, the projection. So here's the idea. So the boundary of our manifold, uh, our boundary of the other complement is something like this, where these are just copies, this is a copy of M. And this would be a longitude L. <laughs> and 
and somewhere in here, you know, we, we have, um, cause we're not doing surgery, right? So this is just gluten and trivia release. Somewhere in here we have, uh, the boundary of the, the disc. So what we mean by projection is once you draw it this way, you can just project everything onto that, that boundary of the disc. That's what this map is doing. So here's the lemma. The lemma is that this map P0 that we just defined actually extends to a continuous map uh, on the night complement. All right, so here's the proof of this theorem. So first, um, we can think of P0, this defines some class of, of maps up to homotopy from the, the boundary of our uh, not complement to this disk. This just means maps up to homotopy. And if you think about what the second guy is, well, these are just homotopy maps from this boundary to an S1. Uh, but more importantly, um, this S1, uh, what we call the Einbrecht and McLean space or Z from one. And of course, you know, this just means this means that uh, pi one is Z and pi K is uh, the identity for everything else. That's all that means. All right. So next, we can do this um, identification. Which says that we can identify uh, the first homology, the first cohomology, I should say, of our boundary, uh, this actually gets identified with this space up here. Uh, I'll just rewrite it. And here's the way the map works. Uh, what is this guy, right? Well, um, I should do it the other way. So if I look at the first cohomology of this, uh, of KZ1 with energy coefficients, by the universal coefficients theorem, uh, this is just the um, set of uh, homomorphisms from Z to Z.
So inside here, we have an identity element, which I'll just call oh, uh, IOTA. Uh, or let's call it I, actually. Or maybe I just call it I identity. Yeah, let's call it identity. And so and the way to get this identification is, uh, so I take an element, uh, If I take an element in, um, and here, Then uh, I can look at, that's it, there we go. I'll break that for a second there. I can look at the induced map, which goes from, Uh, it goes from H1 of the uh, of KZ1 to H upper one of uh, boundary of MK. And then finally, to get uh, the, the thing we want, uh, it's going to be this guy will compose with this identity. I guess I should say that this is the, that's important here. Anyway, I, the long and short of it, <laughs> Uh, just kind of reset here. Long and short of it is that uh, this map This map corresponds to H upper one of boundary of K. Okay. So then if I decline uh, by IOTA to be the inclusion map that goes from the boundary of MK into MK, This, of course, gives us uh, a map iota upper star from H upper one of MK to H upper one of boundary of MK. And we can think of P0 as being an element in here by this identification above. I claim that 
this guy is in the image of Iota Star. And because this is true, that means that uh, we can define P just to uh, to be some representative of this uh, of uh, the pre-image, something in the pre-image. And, and that does it for the lemma. All right, finally, just to prove the theorem, So, uh, so now we have a, a, a link called this L uh, in a integer homology sphere. Well, we can define a, uh, we can consider the map. Um, P zero from the boundary of uh, the link complement to uh, the boundary of a D two, um, and the way this map will work is that if I take a point on a link complement, it's going to be on one of the the torus boundary components, and then you can do the same projected map as before. And this gives us a map. Uh, from the link complement to the boundary of uh, of a disk, and we're going to assume that this map P is a uh, is transverse. Uh, uh, to a point in the image. And what this tells us then is that the inverse image of this of this point uh, is going to be some uh, surface in the link complement. Uh, orientable, of course. With boundary the link. And the last step is that this, this surface may not be connected. So uh, if this is not connected, then we just two components together. All right, so that's the theorem. 
So I want to do a quick example. Oh, I ran out of paper. Let's uh, add more paper. So let's take this guy. Uh, let's do uh, one over P surgery. Uh, one over, uh, that's confusing. Let's do one over Q surgery. Oh no, not not. And let's consider K just to be this unknotted component. Uh, so, this is a not in the energy homology sphere, so we know it bounds a surface. And what surface does this bound? What if we zoom in? Um, If we zoom into the, oh, I need to color these. If we zoom into this blue component, we know there is a uh, surgery curve which goes once around the meridian. And P times, uh, Q times around the longitude, which bounds a disk. So then what you want to do on The green component um, is oh, this is gonna be really hard to see. What you basically want to do is take uh, this guy is going around here. Uh, you, you, you take this disc and you're going to. Well, you don't want to take like the disc that you want to take that you see. Uh, you want to take a guy that's. Uh, this is what this way you should think about it. I want to thicken this guy up, this K, and I know I can take uh, a curve on this boundary which goes uh, once around this way, and it spans. That's the wrong direction. Q times around this way. And if I did that correctly, did I did that? I think I might did that incorrectly. Nope, should be the other way. And then this thing is gonna Co bound a surface uh, with the red curve because they're homologous. And then, of course, you can always extend this surface inside the, uh, the neighborhood of the knot, right? And that's what the, the cyber surface would look like in this picture. Jonathan, can you repeat that last part? Uh, the extending, extending part? Yeah. So, uh, so in the solid torus, what do we have? Uh, let's say our, our knot technically is, let's draw it this way. So this is a neighborhood of K, uh, or not technically in the center of it, right? And we have this curve that goes once around the longitude and some numbers around the meridian. But inside the solid torus, the orange and, and the green curve are isotopic. So you can just take a little uh, band here. It just kind of loops around like this. 
and I just glued that onto the whatever surface that I had up here. Oops. That's what I'm gonna do. And that's how I'm gonna get my, my, my surface. So I just glue this orange part into that orange part. Is that clearer? Okay, yeah. 